Uh, now we have uh, next up uh, a gentleman that is well known in the valley. Uh, he came from Himachal Pradesh, went to BHU, came to the US, and as they say, the rest is history. He started five different companies, had uh, five exits, including his latest one is Zscaler, uh, which is uh, one of the largest and fastest growing cybersecurity companies. But uh, we wanted Jay not to come here and talk about his tech life, but his journey from Himachal Pradesh to the United States and how that journey happened and what he's doing now. So Jay, please come on up. Thank you, thank you, MR. Good morning. Good morning. Good. Morning. Good. Uh, we will use the, the 15 minutes I have to share my learnings and answering any questions you may have, right? So, 10 minutes, I'll give you a, a quick view of some of the lessons I learned to come from a small village in the foothill of Himalayas to Silicon Valley. Sometimes it seems like that it's, it may be a dream rather than a real life. Uh, you know, I've been lucky all along the way. Um, this is a fascinating picture. This is the first time I'm sharing this photograph. Okay. Uh, I pulled it. Uh, this, is, this was not done in early days. This was done in 88 because when I was a child, there was no camera at all. So, so the first photograph I, of mine that was taken was in a high school uh, picture. Then they take the picture at the end of the class. So I went back to India in 1988. My dad was plowing his farm field, and I said, let me give a shot to see if I've forgotten about it or I still remember it. Okay. Uh, but that overall, I think adversity can really help. Often we think about hard times. My parents never got a chance to go to school, so they really motivated me to say, if you want to get out of this tough life, you should study hard. Okay. So that's what I did. So the biggest asset I had in my childhood was a desire to learn, right? Uh, then uh, books became my best friends, okay? I just love to read, I love to learn. Uh, somehow I came, ac every book I came across, I just devoured it. Uh, my high school had a small library, literally with three little book cabinets, okay? I ended up reading all the books I could find. So books became my friend, motivation, self-improvement, learning, knowledge, and that's what inspired me the most. I think as you know, we're all impacted by what we read, what we watch, what we think, and what we hear, and all that is impacted by who we hang around with, okay? so. This, this became one of the very exciting part of my life where I would learn and I became a very, very good student, right? And being a good student because of hard work helped me uh, to, along the way. I, I had good grades as always number one in my school, but it wasn't a big deal. A village school to be number one means nothing. <laughs> uh, but then uh, my teachers helped me along the way it's good to see how there's some great people in the world who always come to help you then find that you're good. I recall in my high school, you know, in India, they have this uh, examination like UK at university level across all schools or high school level. And when I was ready in my, this was my high school exam, the master comes to me and says, Hey, you're wasting your time sitting in the class, okay? Why don't you, I will coach you. And you go and study in those bushes out there, do your work, come back, and I'll review it twice a day, okay? So that was my special prep exams, okay? 
those things helped me a lot. And with that, I essentially got into IIT by accident. Okay. I was a good student. I, in my pre-university, I had number one rank in my university across uh, Himachal Pradesh. And I knew that either I wanted to do engineering or medicine. Those were one of the two things that people talked about being good areas. Um, I didn't like blood, so engineering became the default thing. And I knew about a few engineering colleges in Punjab and nearby. Uh, then one professor said, hey, there's something called IITs. Okay. I don't know what it was, but I, I found that IITs will take if you are uh, the, the gold medalist in a university. There's some number of seats available. I applied. I got into it. I took electronics engineering kind of by accident because I didn't know what engineering branch was good. And I thought electronics seemed to include communication, radar, television, and all that stuff. That seemed cool. And it ended up, ended up helping, actually. It's a right area, just into computing. The biggest thing I had, biggest uh, shock I had was going from a village to IIT, because all these students at IIT, convent educated from Bombay and Delhi and Chennai and all that stuff. So, so the, one of the challenges I faced there was my, my language, my English was broken, okay. Uh, not just accent, but since, I mean, the teachers in high school and all didn't really, they didn't have good English. So I made up all the pronunciations of all the words I learned, okay. And they are, half of them were wrong. So, as some of my classmates will make fun of me, and I kind of said, hmm, how do I solve it? I found a couple of people who wanted help in math and science, and I needed help in English. I cut a deal with them. You help me fix my English, and I'll help you improve your math and science. And that kind of stuff helped me quite a bit, right? It was good. Good communication, good presentation skills are important in every walk of life. That's the lesson I learned at IIT. Then when I came to the US, I kept on working on it and working on it. And it, it helped me a bit. I then moved from engineering to business. That was also by accident, too. Right? Like most Indians, you come here to do engineering. I did my engineering. And I started to do software development, just like most of us. And this small company will take me out for demos. Since I had written this software system, I knew it inside out. And that's when I discovered that. I enjoy more talking to people than writing code in front of a terminal all day long. And that's when I called IBM, and I moved to sales, and then to marketing. So I think that is a big help, at least for me. My personality, I enjoy that more. And combination of tech background combined with some of the sales and marketing experience me a lot to do all these startups, right? So exposure to broader world is a good thing. Uh, then startup world, uh, that was another kind of, call it accident because it wasn't part of the plan, okay, right? I mean, I, the plan I had was I want to be a great student, a good engineer, and, and then see where life goes. Uh, this happened when internet was just taking off, Mozilla browser was invented. This, this young man, Mark Andreessen, had started this company, Netscape, Mozilla browser, and I said, wow, if this young guy can do it, why can't I do it? That was a simple question. There's no background of entrepreneurship in my family of small-scale farmers, uh, but all this happened because I love to read. So I read everything about Netscape and browser and everything. The more I read into it, the more I fell in love with it, the more I became fascinated and convinced. And my quiet wife who is sitting there, uh, she and I would talk about it. She comes from finance 
background, MBA in finance, and she had done masters in information systems. So we worked together at IBM, we worked together at Unisys. So she was working at Bell South in Atlanta, and I kind of, I would say, hmm, startup, startup ideas. And she helped me, she inspired me to say, let's go. And since we failed to raise VC funding in Atlanta, and they said, hey, what experience do you have in doing a startup? The only choice was, you put your life saving on the line, otherwise you give up your dream, right? So, with Jyoti's support, he said, go. Okay, that was wonderful, right? Ability to take risk is fundamental if you want to do something significant. And then, to make things more interesting, I said, if you keep on working, I'm starting this, we need to hire people and finance this, that, why, why don't you quit your job too? So we do it together. It's like burning the bridges so there's no turning back. Okay. Probably the, the biggest, the best gamble of our lives. Now, sometimes you wonder, how do you go through that decision? Is that a big thing? It is and it's not. Okay. The way we got comfortable with it was the following. What's the worst thing that can happen? The company fails. We lose our savings. So can we find a new job? Yeah, there's 100% confidence that we can find a job. Lifestyle is pretty simple. There's no fancy cars and fancy houses. Our home mortgage in Atlanta was $800 a month. So we said go. So that, that's probably what helped, right? Thinking like that makes you think, right? Probably some of the, that thinking was impacted or influenced by uh, Dale Carnegie's book, How to, start, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. Because, I mean, that's how he talks about it. He said, think about the worst and then take a step and move on. So that led to startup and, and this startup became successful rather too quickly and got acquired, and I was wondering, and startups are supposed to be hard. What, what's wrong here? I mean, it was rather easy. Everything just worked out fine. It must be a fluke. So we said, let's try to do it again. And this time, we kind of said, we can only put so much money in one company, let's do multiple startups. But do it like having kids, stagger them one or two years apart. So that's how we started three other companies. Now, it's hard, it's harder than I had thought because my thinking was I spend most time with the youngest one. As they grow, they get easier because they can take care of themselves. It's not quite that easy, but good luck, good timing, great teams, lots of hard work. They all became quite successful and eventually, like most startups, they got acquired by large companies. And that led me to 2007, 2008. Here, the notion was, I don't want to do one more startup and sell it. Enough. Let's do something big, let's do something lasting. I was at a stage of my life where I could take some more risks. Now I had enough experience and enough financial kind of background to really drive it, so we started Zscaler. Inspiration came from Mark Benioff, I was using Salesforce and that in all startups since the year 2001, when each of them was under 10 million in annual sales. So I was a big fan that the world will move to SaaS. This is 2007, because I had used them. And overall, this conviction that more and more applications and business will happen in the cloud. Mobility was already there. We were all using laptops. iPhone was just announced, introduced a big screen and said, if applications move to the cloud, users become all mobile, this old school security around firewalls and VPN should be used less. We need to invent a new model, not a next-gen next firewall, but a world without firewalls, where we become a switchboard. The users comes to us, we connect the right party to right party, there's no such thing as inside is safe, outside is unsafe, everyone is untrusted. There was no word like zero trust at that time, but that's really what we built. So today, uh, I covered that. We've done, luckily, pretty well. Uh, that's our 
ARR growth over the years. We are a well over a billion dollar ARR cash flow positive, about quarter of a billion dollar per year cash flow positive. This is how our cloud grows. The more you sell, the more traffic goes through our cloud. This is about uh, 60 trillion transactions were processed fiscal last year, which ended in July. Uh, 250 billion daily transactions, to give you a reference point, Google searches in a day add up to about 8 billion. So you can do the math, how much more traffic do we handle because everything from an enterprise goes through us. Uh, I'm a big fan of customer satisfaction. The number of tickets per billion transactions have been trending down. Uh, that's what makes our customer happy. Uh, we are hiring quite a bit, sitting at north of 5,000 customers. So I think it's, to me, it's about unlocking our potential. We all have it. If I can do it, you can do it too. But I think it's, it's a mindset change. It's challenging yourself. It's challenging your norms. You're always thinking, is there a better way of doing something? And investing yourself. It's learning. It's building conviction. It's developing pa passion. I mean, that's all it takes. And that gives you conviction. But being confident, but being humble at the same time is fundamental. And I am a big fan of learning and knowledge. I'm a big fan of passion and I'm a big execution. Nothing happens without execution, right? People talk big about strategy and ideas and all that stuff. Any idea you have, 200 people out there have the same idea. Whatever you are working on, there are lots of other people who are working on it, the same, on the same thing in this world. All right? People who execute better succeed. So with that, uh, if we have any time, I'll Take a few questions. Thank you so much, Jay. And Jay is very humble. He started five companies. Uh, I think three, three were acquired. One went public and then acquired, right? And then this one is public, right? So he's done five companies. I this is the first public. First public one. Yeah. Okay. First public company. Uh, the market cap is huge. Jay is very humble, as you can tell. You know, he is the number one Indian American on the Forbes list. Okay. Oh, let's uh, not talk but, about no, no, that. No, no, no. No, I'm saying that let's, you're humble. Let, let's you're, talk about how do we get better. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. But, but that, the follow-on question is, okay. what are you going to do with the wealth you've created? <laughs> because we've been talking so yeah. much about philanthropy here. Right. So I have to put that on the line. Of course. Yeah, we have some ideas. I uh, want to fix education because that's where my passion lies. As we retire from sale, uh, from Zscaler, one day we'll be focused on how do we make the best of the best education available online, interactive stuff. So the best of the best education is available for any child in India or Africa because it's the education that really gets us out of the cycle of poverty and all that stuff. Uh, any questions for Jay? I think we have several. Uh, Mega, can we get a microphone? Okay, do you have another mic? Yeah. Test. Hello, Jay, sir. Uh, I'm a Pahari. I'm from Jammu and Kashmir. We, I'm from the we Himalayas. We met a few yeah. months ago. So, firstly, again, I had said it last time as well, that you're an inspiration to all us Paharis because, you know, we are like, we're very chill and we laid back. And I run a foundation, as I told you. If there's one advice that you had to give me on how we can help the women back home in the Himalayas, you know, how do we get them to make money and get employed? What would that be? Sorry, if there's one thing we could do, what? Uh, to get uh, people in uh, Himachal and other places educate, you know, working. What, how would they get to work? I'm not sure. I have a silver bullet, but there are generally multiple programs. There's a program in Himachal that this group started where they are creating scholarships to a few hundred students per year. They're getting placed in university. I'm involved in that group. They, they just reached out to me last year. 
So the, there are many groups involved. I'm not expert at this stage. I am 200% 200, 200 focused on Zscaler right now. Okay. Uh, yes, a little work here and there, but I, I'm a big fan of focus, focus, focus. So I'll learn along the way. I'm learning as I'm participating with a few organizations. American Indian Foundation is one of those. Uh, entities that is doing a lot of good work, so I'm, I'm doing some level of help. But uh, I'm glad to be a sounding board to help and figure out whatever ideas you have. Right. Any other questions? Yeah, one more here. Um, hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, first of all, thank you for that uh, just inspirational journey that you went through. And uh, where you are now. Um, as a fellow, just as an entrepreneur starting up, kind of going back to when you were jumping into this, right? I'm sure you had your down moments. Um, what were, what's the advice there? How do you go through some of those moments uh, in the journey? Look, there are lots and lots of down moments when we go along, right? If there are no down moments, we aren't doing something challenging. So I'll give you a couple of examples of my down moments. Okay. When I joined IBM for sales, my first job, moving from being an engineer to sales, I thought I knew how to sell. Yes, I knew technology, but I really didn't know how to sell. And they assigned me GE, General Electric, as my account, one of the hardest accounts. So I would call, and they'll hang up on me. Okay, I probably tried many, many times. No one will listen to me. Say, IBM, you go and talk to data center guys. Engineers don't talk to IBM because I was trying to sell IBM's engineering systems. Okay. And as I was making no headways, I came across a few Indians uh, at IBM, just thought at GE, just as GE aircraft engines in Cincinnati. And then I picked, the, picked up the phone book. They had 20,000 people. And I went to the entire phone book and highlighted about 300 Indians. And I thought maybe they'll be more sympathetic and listen to me. Okay. Most of them were not in the area. They were buying computer systems. But at least they helped me, guide me a little bit, figuring out. And eventually, after three months, I had figured out a map and figured out who to talk, who to talk. So they will be. 100 calls that people will hang up on you, but there'll be one call that changes everything that gives you hope and inspiration. You need to believe in what you are selling. You need to, once you have belief and conviction because you know your stuff, then it becomes easier, right? At Zscaler, the solution we built is totally opposite of how security is done. All right, security is all about these firewalls. No, no, we are just the opposite. We are in the cloud. So when I would talk, call these security managers who are managing these firewalls and proxies, they'll kind of look at me and say, I love my boxes. Why are you here, right? We call them box huggers. So then I realized after a few months that I was wasting my time talking to the wrong people. So then I started to move up to talk to CISOs, head of security, because they will understand a lot more. So in the early days, if I talk to 10 CISOs, Seven will say, you're crazy. Okay. Two will say, interesting, but I'm not ready for it. And one will say, what an exciting and creative new idea. I want to work with you. That one positive thing, and you forget you say these nine missed out an opportunity to take advantage of something special I have to offer. And then you move forward. One last question. Anto? Check. Yes. So thank you for everything that you mentioned. It's truly inspiring. Two things that I wanted to understand. Of course, it's nothing to do with the business you run. You spoke about your lovely wife, Jyoti. You spoke about the relationship you all had on this journey. I'm a young entrepreneur, I see obsession and focus and wanting to get there, doing things, but you know, balance in terms of family, family life and how to sort of really foster that along this journey because 
it is a maddening place. You're running large teams, you're working with different people. What is the mindset back home and how do you, you know, sort of really play that mindset out? Number one. Number two, how do you figure out sleep um, in, the, in the process of this journey? You know, did you have a, you know, time that you actually uh, lost a lot of sleep and did that have a, you know, detrimental effect on you? Or were you still focused to say that, hey, I want my personal, professional and spiritual life taken care of while I'm on this journey of building large companies? Okay. Yeah. Uh, good questions. You know, I, I like to say, if you want a happy life as an entrepreneur, get your spouse involved in business with you. Okay. Jyoti has been involved in doing all five startups with me. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I think there is very good understanding of what it takes when both of you are involved. Now, obviously, it depends on personalities of people. But in our case, it helped. Now, this Indian cultural values, my parents just moved here to help us raise kids. So that was a big, big help. So we are able to actually focus on the business and family, all that kind of stuff. Uh, that is good. In terms of balance and sleep and all this stuff, see, balance is a matter of priorities of what's balanced for one person is not a balance for second person, okay? It's a matter of what do you like to do, what do you enjoy in your life, right? And it's not spending too much time. In fact, I personally believe that three most important things in life to have, is, it starts with good health. If you don't have good health, nothing matters. There's a mental health, there's a physical health. Mental health comes if your family life is happy, okay? And the physical health depends upon three things, good food, good exercise, and good night's sleep, right? I try to do that. I like to sleep for seven hours, 80% uh, of the time. I do it unless my travel messes it up, okay? So I think you put quality time on it and you take time off. And the other thing is, if you do your startup to get rich quick, you'll be disappointed, okay? Uh, I never really drove any of this business to make a lot of money. It's always driven by the fact that you do, you're doing something to make a difference. If you do good things in life, money follows you, okay? That's kind of the philosophy that has helped me, and it's perhaps I didn't have attachment for money because I never saw money in my young life. And probably that played a role for me and Jyoti to put our life saving on the line and say, let's do a startup. I mean, that single thing probably catapulted us. If we hadn't made that decision, I'm not sure where life would have been. You take chances, some things will work out, something won't, and you take steps, you course correct, and you move on. Jay, okay. thank you so much. You're a true, yeah. you're a true Indian and American dream. Thank you. You're a true Indian and American dream. Thank you, Emma.